Hi guys, please welcome with me today Chip Wilson. Chip Wilson is a Canadian self-made uh, billionaire. He created three companies in uh, sportswear and one of them is the iconic Lululemon. And 2004, he was chosen the Canadian Entrepreneur of the Year in the area of branding and marketing. marketing was it right? Hi, right. Chip. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. Uh, you are a really inspiring uh, personality. And you told me when you were 18 or 19, you spent a year on uh, a pipeline in Alaska, and during that year, you read 200 books. Tell me what impact did it have on your career? Well, I only read 100, so I just want to get that. And it was really the top 100 books of all time, at least in that era. That was quite a long time ago. But I think it just gave me a very global view of the world, very, uh, a lot of theory and uh, history and uh, uh, an idea before the world was global how different people in the world thought. And uh, I just, I think to be able to have the ability at that age to read, to have the time to read those books, because as in my belief is all knowledge is based on the knowledge we already have. So the more of a foundation I had, then the easier it was for me to learn more things as I grew older. Okay. Uh and then you, you told me you went into business and um, in the first company you were struggling with the company. You, uh, you were close to going bankrupt at, uh, at the end you rescued the company. Uh, but you told me this was because you stumbled upon some self-development cassette set by uh, Brian Tracy. This was one of the reasons and uh, you started reading books about business, about uh, uh, self-development. Can you tell me the story? How uh, how did it impact your company? Well, I think I was always in survival mode and quite often in survival with a couple of young kids. I was doing everything but thinking about other people. I was only thinking about myself and how to make a paycheck on Friday, you know, Friday to feed the kids. So to what I really got was making the switch in how I viewed life, my context for life, when it wasn't just about me, it was really about everybody else. And once I started operating from, from putting everyone else before me, it almost instantly my life become, became, um, well, it became wealthier, but also a lot more fun. I think that my relations with people were um, elevated and, uh, and it became going to work became a lot of fun rather than a struggle. I understand. Well, I interviewed you two or three years ago, right? And mm -hmm. uh, you decided to participate in this uh, book project. I will show it maybe. Uh, yeah. This uh, book project to uh, contribute to the billion dollar secret. And I wonder what made you actually contribute to, the, to my project. Well, I think you were the first probably to not think in the terms of, you know, million, you know, millionaire books that were probably put out 20 years ago, but the reality that there are billionaires now and quite a few of them is probably the new millionaires. And I think the people that have made their billions in this era are probably much different than the ones that have made it before, because I think uh, this era of billionaires were all global. And ran and knew how to how the world operated, and that's a different context. It, yeah, so let's just call it you know the world's gone global, and so a new book need to occur. Okay, uh, and what in your eyes makes uh, this book valuable? Why should uh, entrepreneurs around the uh, world read that book? Well, because of the uh, digital era, which we're in, which is, you know, if you look back, there was the agricultural revolution and the industrial revolution. Now we have the digital revolution. People could say, oh, you know, they're in clothing or they're in metals or they're in agriculture or they're in fast food or whatever. But 
without without taking into view technology and the technology being able to um, to move to exponential number of consumers quite quickly and to grab big data um, that is the that is what I that's what I see is the difference in that and why it's a different book do you have any like favorite story in the book or would you like to share your favorite story from uh, from your life with the world audience well I think my favorite story is when I was 10 years old and I was a competitive swimmer and a very mediocre one and I uh, was 10, so I was 10 years old, I was at the end of the pool and my dad came up to me and, and offered me the, the coaching that I should maybe sprint right from the beginning. It was a hundred meter backstroke. And I had never, in that era, people mostly wanted to look good in races. So they would always save themselves for the very end and then sprint at the end in what we call looking good. Where my dad had this idea that maybe in, in an athletic event, maybe the idea is to sprint right from the very beginning. And then whatever you have left on the end, if you get to the end, great. If you don't, you don't. And he was willing to save me, of course, if I drowned. So, um, so being a naive 10-year-old, I went full out sprint and I broke the Canadian record for the 100-meter backstroke. And, um, and so it wasn't so much that I mean, that was great, okay? Like, I really get it, but I dropped my time like eight seconds. No one could believe it had been done. They had to redo it the next day to check again. But from that point, I think, I believe I formulated in my mind where I never wanted to be on my deathbed and think that, oh, I didn't give 100% to either my relationships or my business or my ideas because at any time one didn't succeed and I only gave like 90% to hold 10% back, would it have succeeded if I would have given 100%? And so I, my context in life is I'm actually scared not to give 100%, scared not to lay 100% out on the line, both personality and money-wise, because I want to see my idea or my relationships work. Wonderful, wonderful. So this is exactly the opposite of, let's say, the, what uh, majority thinks or what uh, the attitude of majority of the population is. Majority of the population uh, is scared of doing things and you are actually scared of not doing things, of not taking the chances of uh, missing out on something, right? So this death, bad uh, perspective. The last question for my readership, what are the three takeaways that you would like people to learn from your stories, from your life, when they read uh, The Billion Dollar Secret, the book? Well, it's a classic statement that culture is important, but I think with inside culture that the, that the CEO has to determine what are those five books or audios or um, courses that he or she has taken that is gonna set the foundation of the culture of the company. And then have the people that are coming in, the onboarding, <clears throat> people will <clears throat> listen, watch, or attend that type of thing. And then to set what I call the linguistic abstraction. So what are 30 terms and definitions defined by those courses, books, or audios that <clears throat> everybody in the company is going to know and understand and communicate on that level? Because much like the Gutenberg Press or the fax machine or the email or whatever, once communication is, uh, can move quickly, then I think a company can move quickly. So um, uh, that's, that's number one. Um, number two is, um, is really asking people um, about a complaint they have. And then, and then what did they do about the complaint? And my, what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for people that complain a couple times, but then take action to do it. So uh, to do something about it. And because there's what you don't want in a company is you don't want people that are ineffective and complain, but don't take action. So I want people that are, that are going to take action about that. Um, 
So you have this notion of responsibility. You define it uh, differently than uh, most other people. So if you uh, complain, uh, it means you, you are not taking responsibility, right? Well, actually, in complaint, it actually means that you've got a commitment to, um, to something. We, people that don't complain don't care at all. But then kind of the middle ground are those people that complain, but then don't do anything about it and aren't willing to put themselves out on the line to take a, a position on something. So, um, so that's that. A third one, uh, would, I think, is always to, um, I think many people don't realize the situation that they're in. The, the fish doesn't realize the water that it's swimming in. And I also give, I often give this analogy of my 18 year old son about 13, 14 years ago, we went into university with an Apple laptop and the girl there uh, at the, who was running her, her, his floor at the university said, oh, last year there was only one la Apple laptop, this year there's five. And my son who was then 18 turned to me and said, dad, I think we should buy Apple stock. But now what's interesting is that only if you are an 18 year old, would you be able to actually see the future of that and really understand what that statistic meant? And his desire and love for wanting to have work on an Apple product 14 years ago. So I think often I'm looking for people to be with who, who can see that everybody in the world is special from their um, ethnic, religious, environmental, parental upbringing, and that can they take advantage of that and then can they do something special with it? Wonderful. You know, I uh, often uh, get uh, a question from my community, people doubting if this is possible uh, to, you know, to learn to be so extremely successful in business um, on, uh, on the billionaire level. And, uh, you know, people say you need to be in the right place at the right time, um, know the right people. And this is certainly, you know, lack plays a certain role. But you are an example of somebody who actually was struggling in business, right? And who uh, learned a lot from, uh, from books, from the courses. And this is what you implement uh, in the, or you implemented in your companies, right? 100%. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> So uh, I want uh, you know my uh, my community to know this. Uh, you you are such an uh, such an example, and this is definitely. Uh, of course, you have um, to have certain personality, and uh, you can develop that personality also. But this is not enough. You need that knowledge. You need to read a lot to uh, develop yourself, to improve yourself, and of course, uh, you know, never stop improving your business and books like that. Uh, and like your book also, you wrote also a wonderful book. Uh, this is the pathway to, to do that, right? Yes, I, I think once a person realizes that there's so much to learn and stuff, what I really got there is that so much I didn't know, I didn't know. And I probably only after maybe 25 years now of kind of reading and listening to everything I could, I mean, much of these principles have been around for thousands of years. And really about every 10 years, a new philosopher comes through and kind of recycles the thoughts in, in a different context, in a different way for a new era. I think it's up for people to find out what, what that, who that person, that philosopher is that, that is delivering, the, it, delivering that information in a way that they can hear it. Absolutely. Sip, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the information you gave us and for the inspiration, of course. And thank you for your uh, participation in that uh, project. That's it for today, guys. Thank you and see you. And I wish you a fantastic day. Let's do something extraordinary today.
get this unique book, The Billion Dollar Secret, go to my website, thebilliondollarsecret.com, here in the video and in um, the description below the video, you will find uh, the link. I invite you to comment this video and uh, give me also a thumb up. This will help to rank this uh, video. And of course, share this video with your loved ones, with your friends one day. They will thank you for that. That's it for today. I wish you a fantastic day. Let's do something extraordinary today.